pray. We've got a lot to pray for, so let's just pray. We want to remember those that are not here. We've got some that are working. We've got some that are traveling. We've got some that are actually sick. So let's just have some prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time that you've given to us. We thank you for the opportunity to come back into your house one more time today together. Together in your name, together on one mind and one accord, seeking your presence, seeking your glory, allowing you to do whatever it is you want to do, whatever you want it to look like, whatever you want it to sound like. We surrender ourselves wholly over to you tonight. Father God, I pray that you would touch hearts and minds. I pray that you would penetrate deep down inside, dear God, and do what needs to be done to transform what needs to be transformed for your kingdom and for your purpose. Father, I pray that you would touch those that have had lost loved ones. 
who takes care of our needs. Amen? So we're going to sing this bridge. And while you're singing it, I want you to declare it over a situation that you're dealing with currently in your life. All of us have something that we need God to fix. Amen? All of us have a prayer. We need an answer. Well, guess what? He's never let me down. He's never failed me. It might not look like what I thought, but he still didn't fail me. I'm going to declare this on my situation. I want you to declare it on your situation. And if you have to, look at the ground and stomp Satan's face in. And say, my God, you'll never let me
more time. But while you're singing this with us, I want you to take the name Jaira. And in your mind, put your own name. Because you are enough. So as we sing it, put your own name. That you are enough. So we're going to go through the chorus. Amen. 
So this morning we started talking about discerning the open doors that God puts in front of us. And I gave you five points. We started talking about, uh, we started off with talking about faith. We know that without faith we can't even believe. Without faith we can't have a relationship with God. Without faith uh, it's impossible to please God as we shared this morning. Amen. Amen. And I gave you the first five clues or points uh, as to how to discern an open door. So we're going to move right on tonight. You ready, note takers? Here we go. Uh, point number six. Is it causing you to rely on Him? Uh -huh. You see, a lot of times we see an opportunity arise and we think, man, I can do this. I couldn't tell you how many. I, it became conditioning for me several years ago working in career services looking for jobs for students and, and teaching them how to interview, how to dress appropriately, all of those things. It became a second habit for me to try to keep my skills up. And it became an annoying habit. I'm so exciting uh, that I would stay on Indeed.com looking for jobs when I had nothing else to do, right? Uh, and in the evening, sitting on the couch many times, I would say, oh, there's a job I qualify for. Apply. Oh, there's one. Apply. And I'd apply and apply and apply and apply. And way every now and then, somebody would contact me and tell me either one of two things. Uh, you, we've either chosen another candidate or we'd like to talk to you farther. Now, when they talk to you farther, you had the opportunity to work on interview skills. Even if I wasn't interested in the position, it just kept my skills up to be able to go and interview and meet some new people. Amen? Uh, but it, I, I, so oftentimes I looked at the positions and I went down the, the list of qualifications and thought, yeah, I can do that. Uh, but in deciding what we can do, a lot of times we put it on us and what our abilities are. Yeah. But I've learned something in my years of serving the Lord that oftentimes when he puts an open door in front of you, it will be something that will cause you to have to rely on him. Yeah. Amen. <sighs> because it may be something that you are not fully qualified for. Come on. Or that you don't necessarily have the skills for. Amen. 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 Two years ago when the pandemic started and our first uh, major hit was in March of 2020 when churches were asked to close their doors and meet virtually or in some other manner. Some folks said we have to get together and they began to gather in parking lots and the open air and parks or all of these other avenues. And uh, I shared with some pastors who had contacted me and said, how are things going for your church? And they said, we're really, really struggling not being together face to face. And we're really struggling with technology. And we're really struggling with our giving being down. And I said, but guys, we've done well because we were already doing those things before the pandemic hit. Mine. Yeah. We've been doing online giving for more than 10 years. And most of our people give online already. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. So it wasn't a challenge for us in that area. The connectivity, trying to keep us all connected, was more of a challenge. That's right. We were already live streaming our services, so that wasn't that big of an issue, except that there are always room for improvements when it comes to technology. And there's always room to learn when it comes to those things. And I'm not a technical person, so it's uh, technology escapes me more than I catch it. So it has, it has been a learning experience yeah. to me for me to do certain things with technology over the last two years. Having a Zoom meeting, who would have ever thought? Right. And knowing what to do with a Zoom meeting. Uh, I was excited a couple weeks ago I was doing a Zoom meeting and I figured out after that meeting before my next one how to put my picture on there. Yeah. <laughs> Understand. Little things. Little things. I didn't want the video on, so I didn't want them to see me eating my snacks. <laughs> but I wanted to be involved in the meeting. I just didn't want them to see me. So I figured out how to put my picture up there with a nice smile. 
He never changes. <laughs> Who are we relying on? Are we relying on our abilities? Or are we having to lean on something greater than us? Anything that God does in our lives is going to cause us to have to lean on Him. Not grow away from Him. A lot of people will take an idea and they'll say, I'm going to run with it. This is what I'm going to do for the Lord. And the next thing you know, they're farther away from Him than they've ever been in their life. Because I will tell you, it, just those of you that are thinking ministry might be in your future in some way, form, or fashion, you better make sure and pray hard. Amen. Because it will absolutely eat you alive. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Greg. You're welcome. If the door opens and it makes you feel like you could do it on your own, mm -hmm. most likely it may not be a door that God has opened. Come on. Because every step we take, but listen, folks, we've got to get to an understanding that we understand every step we take and every move that we make has to be reliant on the moving of the Holy Spirit and God's power for us to be able to move in any direction. That's why when Melissa and I were looking at buying vehicles, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And we went months praying and asking and looking and seeking and wishing and dreaming. And then settled for what God said, this is what you can have. Amen. <laughs> I looked at some vehicles that I knew I couldn't afford when I looked at them. It almost shocked me to even look at the sticker on them. But I'll tell you, it's nothing compared to what they are now. <laughs> They're outrageous now. But I, I looked at some things and I said, God, I would really like to have that, but my budget didn't fit that. Right? My ability didn't fit that. So he gave me something that I could handle. Listen. If you and I think we've got it all figured out, then we have left God somewhere. Amen. He is the only one with all of the answers. Often open doors of opportunity from God cause our faith to be tested and strengthened. Not tested and thrown by the wayside. Yeah. Psalm 18 and 2 says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom will I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. We used to sing, sing a song that's based on a verse of scripture from Psalms that says, I just went blank. All right. Help him, Jesus. Help him, Jesus. High tower. The righteous run into it and they're saved. Yeah. I just went totally blank on that song completely. The, the name of the Lord is a strong town. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Well, I don't know where I went right there. Uh, verse number seven, option number seven here. It is, it is that an, is an open door, is it an open door that you didn't pray for or ask for? This one really isn't a test as, as much a test as it is something to consider. You see, there are many opp opportunities that will just pop up out of thin air. Oftentimes, the enemy, if you're in a place of trying to make a decision, the enemy will throw an option or an opportunity your direction just to see if he can get you off track. Right. Some of the best advice I ever received in ministry was from a great uncle of mine who had been preaching for a number of years and pastoring churches. And he said, David, here's some advice for you from an older preacher. Every time you begin to pray and ask God to give you a message, understand you've got some discernment to do. There will be three messages brought your way. One that God wants you to preach, one that you want to preach, and one that the enemy wants you to preach to cause destruction to somebody. Amen. So oftentimes our opportunities could be a trick. God will bless those that are obedient to Him. That's right. Those that listen closely enough to follow yeah. His leading. That's 
right. down the right path. I don't know how you approach life, but I learned many years ago that I am too easily confused sometimes. Yep. <laughs> so my prayer when I'm looking at an opportunity is always, God, if this is where you want me to go, then you open the door completely for me to walk through and let it be no doubt that it's you. Otherwise, slam the door in my face. I don't want a part of it. That's right. Amen. Amen. But don't give me the don't even give me the opportunity to make the wrong decision. Uh -huh. Help me in my ignorance to walk forward in the doorway that you would have me walk in. Yes. Amen. Amen. Maybe some of you have got life figured out a little bit more than I do, and you don't need that kind of prayer, but that has worked for me for years every time I've had a major decision to make. Come on. If an opportunity falls in your lap, consider that other tests could be needed to determine if that is the one that God is blessing you with Amen. Okay. or something else. Amen. God opens doors all of the time for His people because He wants to see us blessed. Right. He Amen. wants to see us in a better place. He wants to see us moving forward and improving ourselves. Right. Proverbs twenty nine and or 19 and 21 says there are many devices in a man's heart nevertheless the counsel of the Lord that shall stand there are many 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 options in our hearts I, I, I can sit and look at Indeed for just a little while and pick out all kinds of jobs I'd love to go do right. Brother Greg's the same class there yeah. <laughs> just all kinds of things I can dream and imagine what a great job I would do in those and I can look at the qualifications and say yep that's me that's me that's me but it may not be where God wants me to be. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Number eight, did it come to you in a dream? Now, I, I will tell you that I am not one to uh, think too long on my dreams. But there have been moments where God was speaking to me through a dream. Mm -hmm. Several years ago, not long after we came to the church here, I had a dream and I woke up, Melissa says, I sound like a mummy. Uh, I sleep with a CPAP machine on and many times when I'm dreaming something or something's chasing me or I'm praying off a demon or something like that, uh, many times by the time any noise comes out, it's more of a moan than anything. In my dream, something's constricting me and in my way and I'm not able to scream, but when I do, it comes out as moans and groans and uh, sounds funny, but I had this dream and I, I remember it, it wasn't just a one-time deal. I started having this dream over and over. It wasn't often. It would be once ever two, once, once two or three times a year there for a few years. I had this same dream. And I've, I've shared this with Melissa. I was in an old house. And there were multiple floors to this house. And I would make it up to the second floor there were a lot of people in the house and i would make it up to the second floor and there were still a lot of people and i would start to the third floor and every time i would start up something would slam the door and there would be something on that third floor and finally after a few years of dreaming this dream i finally made it to the third floor and when i did is when i began to struggle and I began to pray in my sleep and speak in tongues in my sleep because something was up there with me. And I dreamed that way a few more times over and over and finally one night I was dreaming that dream. This was the last time that I had it. It's been a few years now. I made it to a point of struggle in my dream where I saw a face of the person that was up there with me. And when I saw that face, I identified the person. And then I knew how to pray. I've not had that dream again since then. And, I, and as, as I asked the Lord, why did that person come in that manner? And why was there such a struggle? And the Lord revealed to me that it was an inner intimidation inside of me. That was causing me to look at something. You Go ahead, that. Pastor. It's all right. But anyway, it was an answer that came through a dream mm -hmm. with me. Yeah. When you look at an opportunity and throughout Scripture, we see numerous times that the Lord spoke to people in dreams. Yeah. 
Think about Jacob and That's Daniel right. and Joseph and so many others. Many of them were prophetic dreams. Right. Some were symbolic. It symbolized something else. And others were even informational, giving them instruction on how to move forward. You see, when we dream, we can't argue or convince ourselves that these are not doors that are opened by God. So perhaps it's those of us a little more stubborn that God has to come to us in a dream to tell us yeah. This is really him when you can't argue back. Right. <laughs> so when we're looking at our dreams, we need to prayerfully consider those dreams and see if maybe there is a pattern where if you feel that God is opening a door of something to you. Uh -huh. Numbers 12 and 6 says, And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. So we see oftentimes that God does speak and confirm what he's doing yeah. through our dreams. Right, man. Trust me, again, I understand and know that sometimes it's just what we had for dinner. But sometimes God really is speaking to us in those moments of dreaming. Option number nine. Does the open door bless others? Is God doing something in you and opening something in front of you that will be more than a blessing to you? Right. See, a lot of people see something opening up and they think, oh, it's a blessing. God's about to bless me tremendously. But does that blessing bless those around you or is this a selfish thing? Wow. When you look at this opportunity, does it give the opportunity for others to be blessed? If it will harm others, then definitely it is not from God. If it will cause others to not see God in you, it is not from God. God calls us to bless others. And when we do this, we let others see Him through us. Right. However, not every opportunity that blesses others comes from God. Come on. Some things are just human kindness. Right? I love it when you see kindness in action at a drive through Somebody pays for the meal behind them and they pay for the meal behind them. And you get a chain reaction going. But at some point, somebody will say, Look! Oh, Free meal, and they take off. Exactly. Somebody paid my meal, great, wonderful. I just got blessed, and they take off. They don't think anything about anybody else. Right? right? Oftentimes, that's how we get in the kingdom. I got my blessing. How many times have you heard us say that in church? A lot of times we're joking. I don't care. If you don't want your blessing, I'll take it. Well, we mean that in, in a manner that if you want to sit there and not get a blessing, then let God just bring it on to me. Yeah. But how many times do we come in with that mindset? If I'm going to get something, I'm going to get something, and I don't care whether anybody else does or not. As long as my prayers get answered, I don't care about anybody else's. As long as God heals me, I don't care if he heals anybody else. We see a selfish generation in the church that considers themselves before everyone else. You see, robbing a bank might be a financial blessing to you, but it Go ahead. Go ahead. will probably hurt some other people in the process. Uh -huh. Amen. True. So we have to consider the ripple effect of our behavior and actions in going through a door. Uh -huh. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Yes. It doesn't say you get blessed and go glorify him. It says let your light shine so that they will see him and they will join you in glorifying him. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Number 10, does it bring peace? Listen, I've heard so many people say, well, God has opened a door for me, and their family is all tore up, their children are all tore up, their marriage is all tore up, their church is all tore up, because of their decision. 
because of the opportunity. Listen, if it doesn't bring peace to your house, it might not be a door that God's opened. Amen. When God opens a door, it should bring peace and not confusion. Right. That's not to say that it won't be scary. That's not to say that you won't have apprehension. But it should still give you an inner peace that would allow you to push forward in doing God's work. You may face battles from the enemy when deciding to walk through a door. But what you've entered knowing that God is with you should bring you the peace to face whatever is on the other side. And whatever attack comes your way. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You and I have the unique ability to know what God thinks about us. That's right. He thinks good thoughts toward us, thoughts yeah. of Peace. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Not of evil. That's right. Peace. The Bible talks about peace that passes all understanding. So we prayed this morning for one. I, I, I prayed, God, give her the peace that passes all human understanding and emotion. Amen. Peace that gets so deep inside of you that even when the storms are blowing, you can sit back yes. in his arms. The last one, number 11, says, has it, has it been confirmed through prayer? If you remember this morning, number one, we started, has it been confirmed through Scripture? I, I would hope you would know that you don't approach anything in the Christian walk without prayer. Prayer is talking to our Father and listening to Him as well. Whenever you face a decision, you always need to take it to Him in prayer. You know, old people used to say they had to pray about everything. They prayed about vehicles. They prayed about their clothing. They prayed about their food. I mean, everything. Kip shared this morning that you made the comment about growing up in your childhood and food. And we talked about it this afternoon just a little bit, not having those things in your home that are necessary for you to survive. And yet, through prayer, it always shows up. Yeah. I remember as a kid having those times and those moments where I would hear my parents talking about how are we going to eat. And God always provided. Yeah. It's amazing how that when we pray, God hears us and he answers our prayers. Right. may sound silly, but I had a pastor several years ago that said he'd just begun pastoring when he was young and they were struggling and financially they weren't well. They didn't, I mean, they barely could afford the car payment to get to work and keep the lights on in the house and those kinds of things. And he said, I was really getting tired of eating fried potatoes and bologna. It just wasn't cutting it anymore. I was tired of it. He said, so I started praying, Lord, I sure would like to have a slice of country ham. Just a slice, that's all I'd ask for. Just a slice of country ham. That would sure be good on some homemade biscuits. We've got flour and water. We can make some biscuits. But a piece of country ham sure would taste good. He said, and I prayed that for over a month. Just asking God. He said, that may sound silly to a lot of people. But to me at that moment, it sounded really good. He said that on a Saturday morning, I went up to the church to check things out and to look around and spend a little time praying and working in the church. And then I went around the corner to the little gas station to find me a, a, a drink. And somebody came around the corner of the station and said, Preacher, I've been looking for you for over a week. I've got a country ham, a whole country ham in my car that God told me to buy for you. I haven't been able to find you. He said, so I prayed for a slice and God gave me the whole hand. Yeah. <laughs> when we approach things with prayer, God takes care of the answer for us. That's right. We have to be still. We often have to stop talking long enough to listen. Uh -huh. Amen. And make sure that we're listening to his voice. 
We ask Him for confirmation if the door was opened by Him. And we ask Him if it wasn't, close the door, please. But the Bible teaches us that when the Lord begins to speak to His people, that we know who He is. John 10, verse number 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You see, as often and as much as we may think sometimes that we're just rambling through this life, we're not. He's with us. He knows us. And we know Him as well. So when He begins to speak, we know His voice. When He begins to direct, we know His direction. When He begins to push, we know His prodding. Amen. Because the Lord has a way of conducting himself. So I challenge you today to look for the opportunities this year. A year of open doors. Look for the opportunities that God has pushed the door open for you to walk through. I've already seen some doors opening in some of you this year. I've already seen him begin to open those and push you in that direction. I've already begun to watch the blessings flow as God does what he does best. Loving all his children. Would you stand with me tonight? I don't know about you, but I, I grew up in a home where we didn't have a lot. You've heard me talk about the house not having running water, having a wood stove for heat, not having a lot of food. There were times I remember in the cold winters, blankets over the doorways. We didn't have doors in the house inside. I can remember the cold winters when the frost would be on the outside and the inside of the windows. And you could feel the breeze coming in around the windows, and the outlets. You remember the nights when I got up out of bed, put on my jacket, my hat, my gloves, another pair of socks, took my blanket and pillow and went to the kitchen and lay down beside the wood stove to try to find the heat. I can remember those things. Inasmuch as I've known those moments in life, Brother Kim, it wasn't just as a child. I remember as one point in our lives as a married couple, very young married couple, our grocery list became our wish list. And I remember the afternoon or the morning when Melissa called me and said, well, we've just run out of ketchup. And I said, write it on the wish list. When we find some money, we'll put it on there. We would go to the store and look at what we could buy cheapest to get by to eat. Listen, even in moments of hardship, God is still our provider. He still opens doors for us. And He makes a way where there doesn't seem to be any way at all. So I want to end this tonight with some thanksgiving. Maybe you're searching, maybe you need to ask some questions, but I, I feel thanksgiving in my heart. I want to ask you to come and just find a place in the altar tonight and just offer up some thanksgiving to God. Thank Him for all the doors that He's opened, all the provision He's made. 